Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, by becoming a patron or simply by not ad-blocking the ads on our videos. Due to the current global situation, we are back to self-quarantining and recording our matches digitally. This week we have a Patreon guest, Drunken Housecat, who won our Discord Patreon raffle to play with us. Our decks are me playing Oloro 7965's Malcolm slash Vile Smasher Nows. Drunken Housecat, whom we'll call Drake, is on Growler Boy's Tatiova CDH turns. David with Nivich's Marilyn Lock and Bal with his version for Yuriko turns. Bal won the roll and Mulligan down to 6. He kept only one island, but has Soul Ring and Brainstorm to hopefully get him out of this sticky situation and find him the missing land. Ginger Brute can get him Eureka out on turn 2 as expected. Mental Misstep is up and ready to interact with early fast mana or Remoras, and Scheming Symmetry is slightly less symmetrical in Eureka decks for winning turns. He sent Mystical Dispute to the bottom. I'm Mulligan once finding fast mana. Watery Grave and Mana Confluence are my lands, whereas I have Mana Crypt for that sweet turn 1 Malcolm. Gamble I'm considering for Ad Nauseam or a combo piece if my Preordain finds me another half. Lotus Petal further pushes my turn 1 speed and Siren Storm Tamer is a good pirate overall for protection and free treasures. Drake kept a slower hand mostly because of Collector Oof in Touristic Study, slowing the board, getting some cards into his hand. He has Forest, Oboro and Misty Rainforest for lands. Mental Misstep can help him protect the study and Crucible of Worlds is passively great with a fetch land and Tatiova. Finally, David kept a healthy looking hand. He has Exotic Orchard and Crystal Vein for lands. Sol Ring can really boost his speed along with Cabal Ritual, Lotus Petal and Soul V Adnate. This way, he can try to cast both Marilyn and Opposition Thief obtained through Vampiric Tutor on the same turn. How are things going to play out? Bal opens the match with an island and a soul ring. Drake does not misstep it because of Collector Oof plus being able to protect the study. Bal casts Ginger Brute which starts a swinging at the vid. That's some hangry food right there. I open up with Lotus Petal into Mana Crypt. Pause for the table to wonder if I kept a manaless hand. Then I play Mana Confluence and cast a turn 1 Malcolm. I sack the pedal to play Siren Storm Tamer after thinking a lot on Gamble. I pass. Drake plays a Misty Rainforest and passes his turn, chilling. The V plays an Exotic Orchard and casts a Soul Ring. However, Bal isn't in agreement with this plan, and so he casts Mental Misstep on the Ring, losing 2 life. The V opens the Social Stack to complain and then casts a Lotus Petal before passing. Bal plays Morphic Pool and moves to one of Yuriko's favorite steps, Combat. He attacks Drake with Ginger Brute and Ninjutsu's Yuriko in since the Brute is unblocked. Yuriko connects and triggers, revealing a dismember and making us lose 3 life. On his second main, Bal replays the Ginger Brute and then loses 4 life to make a mess by dismembering the poor Malcolm. My next turn is looking pretty meek now. I lose my first creep roll, I then play an untapped Watery Grave and move to my end step. Drake chooses this moment to crack his fetch, painfully aware I might have Opposition Agent available, but I don't. All is good as Drake gets himself a tap breeding pool. Drake plays a forest and then casts Collector Oof. The table shudders when this happens. Priority passes to me and I flash in a Notion Thief. With no opposition agent from me since I am tapped, David casts Vampiric Tutor and puts his own agent on top. Notion Thief resolves and then Collector Oof resolves as well. David plays a Crystal Vein. David sneakily plays a Soul V Adne to try and win next turn. Bal plays an untapped Watery Grave and then casts a Demonic Tutor for a Deadly Rollick. He goes for the main phase instant as he excels Notion Thief, since I am tapped out and this way I can protect my creature with the Siren. Bal then attacks me with the Brute and Yuriko. I block Bal's commander with Siren Storm Tamer because it's not going to be doing anything anytime soon, and that's one less draw for Bal. He passes to me. The Crypt wins the roll again, slapping me a second time. I go ahead and cast a Preordain, looking for solutions. I play a Volcanic Island and cast a Gilded Drake. In response, Bal brainstorms, afraid of losing Yuriko. However, I am pretty sure the Vid can win next turn and currently we all have blockers. 
So, I take the vid Soul V Adnate, thus preventing the vid from having the mana to lock the board next turn. On his turn, Drake keeps floating under the radar as he plays Oboro and then casts Rizik Study. His plan is going pretty well so far. The vid goes to his turn and misses a land drop. He decides to just go for it as he sacks Crystal Vein to add 2 colorless. He then plays Cabal Ritual adding 3 black, not paying for the study. He uses 1 black to cast Sacrifice, sacking the Gilded Drake and further financing Drake's studies. His plan goes sideways, as Drake mentally steps the Sacrifice, preventing the lock with Marilyn yet again. Mental misstep 2, David 0. With the rest of his mana, he reveals and flashes in Opposition Agent, not paying for the study and in a very rough spot. Bal plays Tetsuko Umezawa, not paying for the study and pretty much changing the game's dynamic now that he can continue attacking with Yuriko unblocked. He immediately attacks Drake with Yuriko, while the aggressive footling goes at the vid. Yuriko triggers and reveals a walk to eons, increasing the pain on the table and revealing the deck's game plan. Bal passes. I lose to the creep for the third time in a row, because what is pain? Pretty much in a horrible spot, I cast Vile Smasher, not paying for the study. My hope right now is that someone deals with the agent so I can gamble for a curiosity or a wheel. Drake plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Druid to protect his Tatiova casts. His hand is looking pretty full and he passes untapped. David is also saying hello to the darkness, his old friend, as he draws and passes. Bal starts his turn by pretty much sending each of his creatures straight at Drake's face. He does not have a way to block or interact, so he takes all the damage. Yuriko triggers, revealing a misty rainforest. Everyone relaxes a bit. Bal plays the rainforest as he has no other land drop, even though the agent doesn't really allow Bal to use that fetch in a meaningful way. On my turn, I get slapped by my creep for the fourth consecutive time. What is 12 life lost? I play a Fiery Islet and crack it to draw 1, not looking for more life loss. With that done, I move to my end step and Drake Cyclonic Rifts David's agent, not looking to see it return anytime soon. Drake then moves to his turn and plays a Crucible of Worlds. He then plays Misty Rainforest, fetching for an island. On his end step, Bal fetches for Underground Sea just in case David finds some way to replay the agent. David draws and moves to his end step. Bal uses his opportunity to cast Chain of Vapor on Drake's Collector Oof, paying for the study. Drake casts a Swan Song, offering a bird in exchange for keeping the Oof where it is at. Bal plays a Scheming Symmetry, not paying for the study, and targeting David since there is hardly anything that Tudor can do for him. He puts a Temporal Trespass on top, while David gets an Ancient Tomb, so he can at least recast the Agent. Bal then attacks me with the bird token, Drake with Tetsuko, and Yuriko and Ginger Brute are sent at the vid. I play Cyclonic Rift on Yuriko to try and stop Bal from multicasting what he tutored and getting the Nijutsu on the same turn, while not paying for the study. Vile Smasher triggers and deals 2 damage to Drake. Rift resolves and then Bal Ninjutsus Yuriko, returning Ginger Brute to the hand. Which can only mean one thing Bal is not looking to cast what he fetched for. This is confirmed as he reveals Temporal Trespass. Every opponent loses 11 and I die, giving Soul V Adnate back to David as an unintentional parting gift. Drake plays Oracle of Moldiah, looking for a way out. He plays a Scalin Tarn twice to get an island and a Mystic Sanctuary to put Cyclonic Rift on top, hoping this is enough to survive on his low health. David plays Ancient Tomb and is done with his turn, fairly sure he doesn't have a lot of options. Bal continues the trend of sending every creature at Drake, who takes the damage. Yuriko triggers and reveals a Prismatic Vista, not killing the table just yet. Bal plays it, looking at David's untapped lands with a frown. He goes ahead and delves to cast Temporal Trespass and try to kill Drake on the next turn, triggering the study and drawing him a card. A literal counterspell comes out of Drake's hand, intent on stopping the Temporal Trespass, but Bal's spell pierces the counterspell. Drake gets another card, but is otherwise incapable of stopping the Eureka player. And now we're pretty much at game's end. On his extra turn, Bal attacks Drake with the very bird he gave him, the ultimate betrayal, while Eureka and Tetsuko go at the vid. In response, our patron goes for a techie play, as he natures claims his own Crucible of Worlds to gain 4 life, but Bal counters it with Pact of Negation. Drake dies to the token he offered, which instantly means that Swansong is bad. 
Bal reveals a Commandeer with the Eureka trigger dealing 7 to the vid. With the oof out of the way, he is now able to cast Walk the Eons to get another turn. He cracks Prismatic Vista and in response the vid sacrifices Soul the Adnate to himself to add 2 mana and flash in an opposition agent. The vid gets a basic swamp from Bal. But, on Bal's extra turn, the Vid sees him pay for the pact and cast a Ginger Brute, and concludes he has no way out of this game at one life, so he just concedes. GG. With a pretty fast game, we felt like we could enjoy one more match, and so we shuffled up and went for round 2. Our patron won the roll this time around. Drake has an island and breeding pool, both of which he can play on turn 1 with exploration. Cooler yet, he can bounce them with Gush to draw 2 and drop them both on turn 2, not getting behind in the process. Ghostly Flicker is a combo piece, while Swan Song is protection. And a way to give other players a deadly beater. Finally, Mystical Tutor can be used for things like extra turn spells to help him combo out. David Mulligan wants and does not have the most amazing hand due to lacking tutors for opposition agent. However, he does have a Swamp and a Crystal Vein for lands, plus Sol Ring and Felwar Stone or Prismatic Lands to instant slam on turn 1. Bitter Blossom is a pretty cool token producer that also feeds his Sacrifice for Mana effects. Defense Greed protects him from interaction, although it's pretty risky. Baal Mulligan to 6 a second time. He has two lands, Agadim's Awakening and an island. Cursed Totem stops me from looping Glint Horn Buccaneer with Malcolm, although so does Dismember and Force of Will. Spell Pierce can help against early threats or can protect him. He sent Flusterstorm to the bottom. I also mulligan down to 6. I have a Volcanic Island, Soul Ring, and Felwar Stone for ramp, despite the fact that there's always a risk of Collector Oof. Wheel of Fortune and Notion Thief together are pretty good to have, and Mystical Tutor could be used to get me a Dark Ritual if I feel it's a safe bet. Fire Covenant was sent to the bottom of my library. Time for the second match. Drake starts our match with an untapped breeding pool. He casts Exploration and plays an Island. Not a bad start. David plays a Swamp. He then casts Soul Ring and waits for the Mental Misstep. It does not come, so he goes on and casts Felwar Stone. Neat start as well. Bal plays Island and passes with Spell Pierce open, although he might be saving it in case he needs to cast Force of Will instead. I play a Flood of Strand and crack it for an Underground Sea. I then full on copy David as I play a Soul Ring into Felwar Stone. On my end step, Drake goes ahead and returns both islands to his hand to play a free Gush and draw two. Pretty exciting first turn. Drake plays Flood of Strand and cracks it for an Island. He then replays an untapped breeding pool and tops that off by casting Soul Ring. Three Soul Rings in play. He passes. David plays Crystal Vein and then casts a Dreadhorde Invasion to slowly amass a big old zombie army. He casts Prismatic Lens before passing the turn. Bal plays Agadim the Undercrypt untapped and casts Cursed Totem so as to keep his turn efficient. On his end step, I decide to play Mystical Tutor for an Ad Nauseam. I thought on Dark Ritual to try and wheel the table out with Notion Thief, but if anyone does happen to have free counter magic, I will be out of the match. And so I go for the Nows plan. I start my turn off by casting Ad Nauseam to try and end it then and there. However, Bal counters it with a free Force of Will, exiling the Karn's Temporal Sundering he found in the meantime. With that turn done, I move to my end step, during which Drake plays his own Mystical Tutor for a Green Sun Zenith. Drake thinks for a bit before he casts Green Sun Zenith for 2. David and I open the social stack to cry as Drake gets Collector Oof out once again. So much for our ramp. Drake plays an island before passing, now fairly ahead in terms of board. David creates a zombie army token during his upkeep, losing 1 life. He plays Tendo Ice Bridge and we now understand that his deck is very likely on Tainted Pact. Why we are yet to understand. Bal draws and passes, not yet finding something to ninjutsu Yuriko onto, but also not casting her. Does he have a creature with flash? On my turn, I play a Morphic Pool and then cast Vile Smasher since Malcolm is pretty much useless right now and I might hit Curiosity or need a blocker. Drake now plays Oboro, Palace in the Clouds, and passes fully untapped. We wonder about his interaction. David grows his zombie army. He attacks Drake with it, not spotting the potential flasher from Bal. And so, on his end step, Bal flashes in a Snapcaster Mage, ready to swap it with Yuriko on his next turn. He does just that as he gets to his turn and goes to combat, attacking David. 
he ninjutsu Yuriko and then she triggers, revealing a watery grave from the top. Bob plays it, not missing a land drop this time around. I play Bloodsign Mire and fetch for a swamp. I pass without tapping for mana since I have Notion Thief up and ready to flash in. Drake plays Nature's Lore for a forest and once again passes with untapped mana to spare and Tatiova up next turn. This does not bode well for my ability to wheel everyone's hands out. David grows his army once again, now at a pretty decent size. He can't attack with it though, since he's saving it to block Yuriko. David plays Mox Opal and moves to his end step, during which Bal loses 4 to cast Dismember on Vile Smasher, so he's able to trigger Yuriko once more. In response, I flash in a Notion Thief, who has no chance of staying on the table. Vile Smasher triggers and deals 4 to Bal. On his turn, Bal attacks me with Yuriko. Since he is always able to dismember my creature, I take Ball's draw down with Notion Thief, hoping that Remover's spell gets aimed at other value creatures in the future. Moving to my turn, I cast Wheel of Fortune. My hand sucks and I want to get back in the game. Drake thinks for a bit, but lets it resolve. David passes priority and Ball flashes a Snapcaster in response, giving this member flashback. The wheel resolves. I go ahead and cast Jewel Lotus, a pretty expensive rock that I can't use right now. I play a Snow Island and I pass. Drake goes to his turn and plays Tatiova, ready to start amassing cards just like David is amassing armies. He plays an island and triggers his Merfolk Druid gaining one and drawing a card. He then proceeds to trigger her again with Misty Rainforest before a main phase brainstorm. With that out of the way, Drake cracks Misty for an island and then draws yet another one. A meager 6 draws in a turn, thanks to the fed shuffling. He passes. David's army keeps increasing in size, pretty much like a villain. He plays a Vault of Whispers, which can't be tapped for mana because of oof. Feels ultra bad. He then plays a Demonic Tutor for, you guess it folks, an opposition agent. None of us is even pretending we don't know what he went for. Bob plays an Island. Before combat, I play a Vampiric Tutor for a reanimate, since at this point there's very little I can do. Who knows, maybe that plan will work. Then I play Chain of Vapor on Bal Snapcaster with the idea of taking a draw from him while letting him have this member up and ready if my plan fails. Bal casts a Mox Amber and a main phase Spectral Sailor before passing to me. I start my turn by playing a Cyclonic Rift on Collector U for plan A. Drake dispels it, meaning that option is out. I go ahead and play Reanimate, targeting Gilded Drake, since the Notion Thief would never remain anyway. However, Drake sees where this is going and mental missteps the Reanimate, along with my plan to steal Tatiova. There go my options. I pass the turn utterly resourceless. Drake plays a forest and returns a borrow to his hand and replaying it, drawing a card with Tatiova. Drake then plays Carpet of Flowers and moves to his second main phase during which he has 3 blue mana to play a Rhystic Study. The card advantage is slowly becoming overbearing, and our patron is now becoming the arch enemy. The visit grows his army yet again, content on watching it stand still. He plays Dark Confident, paying 1 for the study and hoping to, at the very least, find some cards to help him run the hills towards victory. On his turn, Bob plays Fairy Seer, paying the study. He then plays an island and attacks Drake with the Sailor. However, as expected, the Sailor gets ninjutsu into a Yuriko, which triggers revealing a Time Warp. We lose 5 life, although that race might not be enough since Tatiova is giving Drake 2 life on each of his turns. It's my time to play and I cast Malcolm, the glorified pirate blocker, while paying for the study. I pass the turn. On his turn, Drake gets 4 from Carpet and plays Sylvan Library for more card draw. Just what he needs. Oboro gets thrown up in the air and replayed twice, triggering Tatiova for that very same amount. Now Drake goes ahead and plays a not too splendid reclamation, looking for the win. This allows him to return Misty Rain Forest and Flood the Strand Tap, drawing two. He goes onwards, resolving a frantic search to draw two and discard two, while untapping both fetches and an island. He cracks Flood the Strand for an island and a Misty Rain Forest for a forest, triggering his commander two more times. We're pretty much just expecting him to win, as Drake plays Azusa Lost But Seeking. He plays Tropical Island and Beseju, drawing two more. However, Drake stops there. He has not found a win yet. We're not sure whether we should be relieved or terrified as he goes to clean up. David grows his army for the sixth time, 
and now it will have lifelink when it attacks, allowing him to also outmaneuver the Eureka. He reveals a demonic consultation with the Dark Confident trigger, losing one life. The V plays a blast zone, perhaps a few turns too late. He goes ahead and swings the army at Drake, who takes the damage without as much as wincing. We move to Bal's turn and he isn't sure about his options, so he goes ahead and casts a Time Warp, not paying for the study. Drake plays a Mana Drain on it to put a lid on the extra turn spell. Bal sends Fierce Guardianship at the Mana Drain, while the study gives our patron another card. In response, Drake goes for the worst possible outcome as he casts Narset's Reversal on Time Warp. Since everyone is tapped, the vid uses this opportunity to cast Opposition Agent while paying for the study. Time Warp goes to Baal's hand and Drake casts a copy of it. Baal plays a Flood of Strand. On his end step, I play Entomb since I can't fully recall the decklist and hope that the vid can get something to try and interact with Drake. The vid tries to do just that, but it seems my deck has no free answers that he can survive or cast without his commander. So, the V chooses to try and win on his turn, if the table survives until then, by searching for Thassa's Oracle. Since he has a Demonic Consultation in hand, he can try and follow his deck strategy, winning with other people's combos. Drake goes for the extra turn that was meant for Baal. He draws only one from the library. He then generates 4 blue from the carpet and plays Prismatic Vista, triggering Tatiova and proceeds to overload Cyclonic Rift uncontested. Drake cracks the Vista for a forest, drawing a card and gaining one life, and then plays and sacrifices Kalintarn for a Mystic Sanctuary. The Merfolk Druid does her thing. Mystic Sanctuary triggers and Drake puts Narset's Reversal on top of his library, which he then draws with Tatiova. Now prepared, Drake casts Temporal Manipulation and uses Narset's Reversal on it, gaining an extra turn while looking for the way to close this game. On his extra turn, Drake loses 8 to draw 3 with the library. He plays Reliquary Tower and bounces Oboro three times with the carpet's mana to dig deeper. He ends his turn by casting Temporal Manipulation, still not having the win con. Can we make it out, perhaps? On his potentially final extra turn, Drake draws only one from the library. This is it. He generates four blue from the carpet and casts a Summoner's Pact, getting himself the last piece of the puzzle. Eternal Witness. He casts it, getting a trade roots from his grave to hand. He plays an activate them to return Mystic Sanctuary to his hand. The Sanctuary gets replayed, returning Temporal Manipulation to the top and drawing it. Drake now has infinite turns, during which he will punch us to death. Because of Nexus of Fate, he does not lose to deck out. Good game. Thank you for joining us for today's matches, everyone. Taking people's turns seems to have been this week's way to go, and both Yuriko and Tatiova achieved their victory through this method. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Adjimo, Illegal, Heated Shield, Drunken Housecat, LL Cool Rat, and Uncrustable, our stack breakers. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!